Hello everybody, uh, we're back again to talk about the progressive era, era and this time we're going to be talking about politics or political corruption. Um, you have a couple learning targets for today. One is that I can describe the corruption in politics through the early 1900s and that you can describe the differences in policies between Presidents Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson. And so we're going to move forward here. And just a reminder that progressives were people who worked to solve the problems of the quickly growing cities and industries. And uh, this is part of a time period in American history known as the Progressive Era, the Progressive Movement. Um, and one of the areas that they were working was to fight corruption in business and in government. Now, before we get started, you need to know a couple things about after the Civil War politics. First, uh, politics was very corrupt after the Civil War. Many people are put into positions of power just because of their friendships with others or because of their business success. There was also something called the spoil system where uh, election winners, if, if you won an election, you could reward people who helped you out um, to win that election. You could reward them by giving them a position in government. Sometimes um, these people were not qualified to work in the jobs that they were given. Um, and that created all kinds of problems. Um, one of these problems is political machines. Political machines were not actual machines, but they were organized groups of people who worked legally and illegally to stay in control of city, state, and federal governments. Oftentimes, political machines stuffed ballot boxes. That means they illegally voted for more than one person. Um, or they voted twice for the same person. So they were voting illegally. Um, oftentimes, these political machines paid people to vote with money, or sometimes they would bribe them uh, with jobs or fear of losing a job if they didn't vote the certain way. Um, these political machines would provide jobs for immigrants as they came into the United States in return for votes. Political machines would teach immigrants the English language, but the first thing that they would teach them was how to read a ballot, uh, how to vote was the first thing they were taught. Um, and the first English words they were taught to know were the names of the candidates that these political machines wanted them to vote for. The most notorious or famous for negative reasons, uh, the most notorious political machine was located in New York City. Uh, it was called Tammany Hall, it was led by William Marcy Tweed. Eventually, William Marcy Tweed is caught and jailed for his crimes. He was accused of stealing money from taxpayers, and eventually he was caught. Um, let's talk about presidents. Uh, many of the presidents that come after the Civil War, their presidencies are marked with some political corruption. Even Ulysses S. Grant. During Ulysses S. Grant's second term, some of his advisors, people that he trusted, were found guilty of accepting bribes. And this, of course, uh, there's no knowledge of Grant ever knowing that these guys were accepting bribes. But once it came out, um, he was responsible because he was the one that hired these guys. And so uh, it becomes a, a, a mark on his presidency. After Grant, we had Rutherford B. Hayes. We talked about him with Reconstruction. He was the one who removed troops from the South, um, which eventually led to Southern states creating segregation laws. Um, he promised changes in government, uh, but again, removing those troops allowed for the country to move forward with segregation as part of it. James Garfield, the president after uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, uh, tried to make changes, but in his first year as president, he was assassinated by a disgruntled federal office seeker. Um, so somebody believed that they should have got a job because they helped James Garfield become elected. And because they didn't get the job, um, they were mad at Garfield and tried to kill him. And they did. They succeeded. Um, James Garfield was our second president that was assassinated. Um, and for a while there, he lived for about a month with a bullet in his body um, and doctors tried to remove it but were unsuccessful and eventually he dies. When he dies, his vice president, Chester A. Arthur, takes over his term as president. And one of the first things that Chester A. Arthur does as president is he signs a bill called the Pendleton Civil Service Act, 
which meant that anybody that wanted to have a government job now had to pass a test for that job. So they had to pass a test that qualified them for that job. Um, it was a way to stop future assassinations like the one that had just happened. Grover Cleveland, after, Ruther, uh, after Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland uh, was a Democrat, the first Democrat elected to the presidency after the Civil War. And he worked hard to hire and fire people based on merit, um, not based on party loyalty. Okay, We're going to come back to Grover Cleveland because he is also the only president to ever be elected for two terms separately. So he serves as president for four years, and then he is... Uh, beaten in the 1889 election by the man you see here, Benjamin Harrison. And Benjamin Harrison helped to try and control inflation. Um, and Benjamin Harrison passed what was called the Sherman Antitrust Act to keep businesses from growing into monopolies. But when he runs for president again, Grover Cleveland defeats Benjamin Harrison. So Grover Cleveland is president from 1893 to 1897 for a second term. Um, and again, he worked to try and hire and fire people based on merit, not party loyalty. Then we get a new president in 1897, a man named William McKinley. Um, he avoided scandal and helped win back public trust in the government. Uh, he was president during the Spanish-American War in 1898. And during his second term, the first part of his second term, he was assassinated uh, at the New York World's Fair. Um, and so William McKinley is our third president to be assassinated, um, and that was in 1901. Now, when he is assassinated, his vice president is then made president, and his vice president was a man named Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt promised Americans uh, a square deal. He promised to be fair and honest with them. Um, and because of that, he began, as the government, he began to uh, make the government regulate businesses. And uh, he became known as a, a political bully. We're going to talk a lot about Theodore Roosevelt in class. Uh, we'll get to more specifics about him. Um, but he's also one of those presidents that sculpted on Mount Rushmore. And so uh, he's someone we're going to talk a little bit more about as we move forward. After, pres after uh, Roosevelt... Uh, serves his two terms, uh, then William Howard Taft is elected as president, and he was Roosevelt's vice president. Uh, but he was not as aggressive as Roosevelt, and he raised taxes on imported goods, which made those things more expensive to buy. And matter of fact, R Roosevelt was so mad at his vice president that he decided to run for president again in 1912, uh, the first time that a president had run for a third term. Uh, the other candidate, though, in that, in that election was uh, not only Taft and Roosevelt, but it was also Woodrow Wilson. And because the Democrats, or, excuse me, because the Republicans were, were divided between Taft and Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson was able to win more electoral votes and became the president from 1912 to 1920. Uh, he introduced the modern income tax. He adopted something called the Federal Reserve of Banks. We still have that today. And he was president during World War I. And under his presidency, women gained the right to vote. Speaking of women gaining the right to vote, uh, progressives fought for uh, women's right to vote almost all the way back to before the Civil War. But it, it, what it took was after World War I, many women... Um, were protesting and fighting for voting rights throughout history, but the early 1900s, especially between 1917 and 1918, these protests became more effective. And after World War One, many or during World War One, many women uh, worked as nurses and helped out the country uh, at home during that war. And because of that reason, many people started to see that hey, you know what? Maybe women should be allowed to vote. And that paved the way for the 19th Amendment in 1919, giving the women, giving women the right to vote. So ladies, you get the right to vote in, uh, officially in, in 1919 when the 19th Amendment comes around. Uh, another a big part of the women's movement was uh, something called temperance. Temperance is the avoidance of alcohol. And there were many progressives who believed that alcohol was the cause for many of the family problems of that day. And so groups pushed to pass 
the 18th Amendment, which banned the sale, transportation, and production of alcohol, became known as prohibition. Uh, but what ends up happening when this amendment passes, organized crime increases. And it didn't stop people from drinking. They just now, they drank illegally. And so uh, eventually, during the Depression, the 18th Amendment is repealed and taken off of or out of the Constitution. Uh, but for a period there of about 12 years, there was a prohibition in the United States. And that's when people like Al Capone and um, John Dillinger start to make a name for themselves with organized crime. We'll talk a little bit more about that in class, uh, but that comes about during this time known as the temperance movement. And all of this is a part of what was called the progressive era, where people tried to improve things in American life. Some things worked, some things didn't work. Okay. Uh, if you have questions or any concerns or anything like that, please come see me in class. We'll talk about them more in class. But uh, remember that your learning targets here were to be able to um, describe the political corruption that took place in the early 1900s and then describe the differences in policies between Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson. And so we'll talk more about those in class. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon.